Imagine silent giants lurking beneath miles of frozen Arctic ice, stealthy nuclear leviathans gliding where few can follow, where Denmark's tracking systems struggle to penetrate. These aren't science fiction. Today, we're exposing the top five Arctic submarines that are effectively invisible to Copenhagen. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep literally into the realm of underwater power and stealth as we examine five of the most formidable Arctic submarines that Denmark would have a very hard time tracking. These subs operate in one of the world's most challenging environments, freezing, remote, and acoustically complex. But these machines are built for it. Let's get into them. First up is the on the exterior, the Bore A is a massive strategic ballistic missile submarine, about 170 meters long with a submerged displacement around 24,000 tons. It features a hydrodynamically optimized hull, a pump jet propulsor to reduce noise, and a sleek silhouette that helps minimize its acoustic signature. The hull is coated with specialized anechoic materials and internal machinery is vibration isolated, all to stay whisper quiet beneath the ice. Inside, the Borier's crew of roughly 107 sailors enjoy comparatively modern accommodations bunks, a gym, and even a small library, which is a big shift from the cramped, spartan conditions of older subs. In terms of performance, the Borea is extremely capable its nuclear reactor sustains extended submerged patrols for months, and its pump jet propulsion enables stealthy high endurance movement. Strategically, it carries each with multiple independently targetable warheads, giving it a devastating second strike capability. Safety features are built in as well. The dual shielded hull redundant systems and acoustic dampening reduce the risk of detection, and its nuclear reactor is designed for long-term endurance with minimal maintenance. It's not just powerful, it's crafted to survive in one of the harshest environments on Earth, where ice pressure and extreme cold are constant hazards. What makes the Bore A especially hard for Denmark, S or NATO more generally to track is its stealth pedigree, the pump jet low noise reactor, an advanced hydroacoustic suite, the Erdish Amphora Sonar, give it an incredibly low acoustic signature. These subs can navigate under thick ice, find Polonia cells openings in the ice for surfacing, and even launch their missiles from those hidden pockets. From a price or value perspective, Bore A submarines represent a cornerstone of Russia's sea based nuclear deterrent. They're not cheap to build but for Moscow, they are critical to ensuring second strike capability, especially in its Arctic bastions. Their strategic value far outweighs the financial cost. In military terms, moving on, that is a multi-role nuclear attack submarine and arguably one of the stealthiest Arctic capable subs in the world. Externally, the Yasin M sports a streamlined low magnetic steel hull with a one and a half shell design that enhances its hydrodynamics and reduces its detectable signature. It has a large spherical sonar array at the bow and flank arrays, making it a sensor powerhouse. Inside, the submarine's layout is optimized for, for both crew comfort and combat readiness. The control rooms and living quarters are modern, though space remains tight, typical for attack submarines. Automation reduces crew fatigue, and there are efficient systems for long under ice missions. Performance-wise, the Yasin M is extremely versatile. It can travel at silent speeds of up to 2028 20, knots in silent mode, thanks to its advanced nuclear reactor. Its armament is highly flexible, it houses and its vertical launch systems, UKSK, can fire or even missiles. That makes it capable of hitting surface ships, land targets, or other subs with speed, precision, and lethal impact. Safety is handled through its strong design. The low magnetic hull reduces susceptibility to magnetic anomaly detection, and redundancy in its nuclear systems ensures it remains operational even under duress. It's also built to handle under ice navigation. Collision risk with ice keels or icebergs is mitigated by its advanced sonar and reinforced bow structure. 
Its unique selling point is its shockingly quiet profile combined with a potent mixed missile loadout. The fact that Perm, a Yasin M, is officially the first Russian nuclear submarine to carry Zircon hypersonic missiles as a standard complement underscores its strategic might. For Denmark, tracking such a sub is incredibly difficult. Its acoustic stealth, low magnetic signature, and missile flexibility make it a serious under ice threat. Strategically, Yasin M submarines are priced as high end assets for both deterrence and tactical warfare. Their value lies not only in nuclear strike capability, but also in their ability to perform conventional strike and anti submarine roles, making them a multi domain risk in the Arctic. Third on the list is this, such as the externally, these are older generation SSBNs, about 167 meters long with twin reactors, two shafts, and conventional propellers. They lack the pump jet stealth of newer models, but their double hull design gives them durability and a strong structure for under ice operations. Internal space wise, these subs carry a larger crew around 135, 140, and house more traditional layouts. While not as modern as Bore or Yasin subs, they are robust with living quarters, torpedo rooms, missile compartments, and the kind of redundancy that keeps them viable for decades. In terms of performance, these subs can reach submerged speeds of around 24 knots, powered by two VM4 pressurized water reactors. Carry each with long range, giving them solid strategic reach. Safety features include the double hull structure designed to absorb stress from ice impact and reinforced missile hatches. In fact, another Delta IV has reinforced aft missile hatches under a project called Vodopad in order to better shed ice when surfacing through polar ice. Its unique strength lies in its legacy reliability. Despite being older, the Delta IV remains a workhorse of the Northern Fleet's nuclear patrols. Denmark and NATO must track these aging but still potent giants, but their under ice operations combined with less modern sonar makes detection less straightforward than for surface vessels. From a strategic value standpoint, the Delta IVV represents cost efficiency. Russia continues to operate them because they still deliver credible second strike capability without the full price tag of building wholly new Bore submarines. They're cheap in the sense of leveraging existing infrastructure and mature technology. Fourth is a theoretical but increasingly plausible submarine the which is a next generation ballistic missile sub currently planned to replace the Bore class. On the outside, the Arcturus is designed with an angled hull, a radical design choice aimed at reducing its detectability. It's expected to have about 12 missile tubes and a more compact displacement than the massive Bore, making it stealthier and more maneuverable in under ice environment internally Although it's still conceptual, the design calls for a crew of about 100 leaner than Bore and plans to integrate unmanned underwater vehicles, UVs like the Surrogate V, helping it scout ice conditions, Polonius, and potential threats without exposing itself. Performance-wise, the Arcturus is envisioned to combine strategic deterrence with tactical flexibility. Its smaller size and new hull form should reduce its acoustic and magnetic signature dramatically, making it harder to detect. And with AUVs on board, it could conduct reconnaissance, map ice conditions, and even deploy drones, extending its reach. Safety design is likely to be sophisticated. Angled hull helps deflect sonar pulses, and automated systems reduce crew load and human risk. The planned integration of AUVs also adds a layer of remote sensing, meaning more risk monitoring without endangering the sub itself. The biggest selling point is its innovation. If realized, the Arcturus would be a stealthier strategic missile sub built for the 21st century Arctic. From Denmark's perspective, this future class could be the hardest to monitor because its design might minimize detection both acoustically and magnetically while operating under ice with the support of autonomous systems. 
In terms of value, the Arcturus could revolutionize Russia's underwater nuclear posture, fewer hulls, but more capability, more stealth, and lower costs per capability, that's a huge strategic play. Fifth on our list is a bit of a wild card, but very real in concept, that Russia is reportedly designing. While not purely military subs, they could carry under the Arctic powered by nuclear reactors. These subs are said to be around 360 meters long and powered by Ritam-200 reactors, the same type used in modern nuclear icebreakers. On the outside, these subs would be massive, perhaps among the largest submarines ever conceptualized, but their low acoustic signature and continuous power source would make them hard to detect under the ice, especially if stealth modifications are applied. Inside, their compartments would be radically different, large cryogenic tanks for LNG reactor spaces, crew quarters and probably specialized handling systems. The design would need to balance cargo capacity and power with stealth, a challenging engineering problem. Their performance would be transformative, able to sail year round across the northern sea route, carrying huge volumes of LNG far more efficiently than icebreakers. And while operational, they might remain submerged for extraordinarily long missions, given their nuclear power source. Safety would be critical. Handling cryogenic LNG in a nuclear submarine adds a major risk. So redundant containment insulation and rigorous safety systems would be built in. Plus, nuclear reactor safety protocols would have to be state of the art. Their unique selling point is dual use strategic value. While not primarily a weapon, such submarine gas carriers could project economic influence, reinforce Arctic sovereignty, and serve as mobile infrastructure. To Denmark as a NATO, they would represent a different kind of challenge, not just a hidden threat, but a symbol of Russia's Arctic reach, combining power projection with resource transport. In terms of price, these submarines would be wildly expensive, but again, the payoff is major. Energy security, geopolitical leverage, and a mobile disguised fleet asset. Now, stepping back and looking at the big picture, these five submarines or submarine concepts form a potent mix of under ice power. Denmark, with its geographical position near the Greenland, Iceland, UK Gap, and its role in NATO's northern flank, faces major challenges in tracking these vessels. The ice, the vastness of the Arctic and the high and acoustic stealth make detection extremely difficult. The end pros deliver strategic nuclear deterrence under ice that fills the role of a stealthy attacker with versatile missile loadout. The promises next gen innovation and minimal detectability and the concept stretches the concept of what a submarine can be not just a weapon, but an economic instrument. To conclude, these submarines illustrate how under ice, undersea warfare is evolving. They represent not just raw military power, but a blend of innovation, endurance, and strategic positioning. Denmark, despite being a NATO member with access to advanced tracking systems, would find it extremely challenging to follow these subs consistently beneath miles of Arctic ice.